Lemon by Kwon Yo Sun. This is translated by Janet Hong. Janet Hong has translated a bunch of great pieces of Korean fiction into English. She's translated some really great comics that you can get from uh, Drawn and Quarterly, who are a really good publisher. She's also translated a bunch of great short story collections that I really enjoyed, like Flowers of Mold by Ha Song Nan. That was a really good collection of eerie short stories. And now she's brought us this novel, Lemon. This is great. This was probably my most anticipated book of October. So it was the first October novel that I read and I was not disappointed at all. First of all, I'm really grateful for the length. This thing is about 150 pages, so I read it in a day, and it actually services a day, if you like. It works really well if you read it in a single day because of the nature of the book and its themes and its events and its plot. It just works as almost like a film. You know, if you read it as though you were watching a film from beginning to end in one go, it works really well. So if you can find the time, if you can find an afternoon to do that, I really recommend it. As I said, this is written by Kwon your son, who is an author that I have never read before. This might be her first book in English translation, I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Lemon is brilliant. It is a drama about the people who are left behind after someone dies, especially if someone dies tragically, unexpectedly, and in a very cruel and gruesome way. It's disguised as a crime story, as a whodunit mystery, but it's not that. It is playing on the tropes of that genre while doing its best to explore what death really does to people who are still alive. So let's backtrack and talk about what it's actually about. There was a girl in 2002, she was a high schooler and her name was Kim Heon. She died. She was murdered, and there are two suspects. She was last seen in the SUV of this rich boy. He's one of the suspects. The other suspect is a young, poor, very simple-minded teenage boy who happened to see her just before she died. And the book begins with an interrogation of him. As the interrogation goes on, he sets the scene. He worked for a chicken shop, and he would go out and do deliveries on his moped, and he gave this other girl a lift, and while they were at a stoplight, the SUV pulls up beside them and they see, oh, it's that pretty girl from school. And he describes what she's wearing, but then it turns out later that that's not what she was wearing. What she was wearing was the yellow dress you see on the cover. And she was in the car of the rich boy. And then next thing you know, sometime that night, she's murdered and her head is caved in. Did the rich boy do it? Did the poor boy do it? Well, neither of them get put away for it. There is not enough evidence to convict either of them. And the poor boy doesn't even seem to have a motive. And so life goes on. And then the bulk of the novel is told from two different perspectives. One is the young sister of Kim Hyeon, Kim Daon. It's about her growing up, her relationship to her sister after she has passed, and it also tells a bit of the story from the perspective of a girl who was in their class, and she and Kim Daon run into each other later on. And so through these two girls' perspectives, we get to learn about the murder, we get to learn about their lives and what happened after death, for them who are still alive at least. The only thing that confused me is that both of these girls' perspectives are told in the first person. And so for the first few pages of each chapter, you're not sure whose perspective this is, whose eyes you are looking through. And that could have been solved if one of them had been written in the third person, but that's literally my only gripe with this book. There's that old sentiment that funerals are really for the people who are still alive. A funeral is not for the person who has died. A funeral is for us to say goodbye, for us to get some closure, for us to weep on each other's shoulders and find a sense of family and community in the death of a loved one. And that's pretty much what this whole book is about, is that sentiment, that feeling, that concept that death leaves a mark on people and how do we continue on as living people beyond the death of someone we loved? And and the age of that person, our relationship to them, the mode and manner of death, whether or not it was expected or unexpected, all of these things factor into how we live beyond death. And all of that is really plain to see in this book. Now, the characters themselves are 
Pretty interesting people, especially Kim Daon, who is the young sister of the girl who died. At one point we see her through the eyes of the classmate, and she is doing her best to look like her sister. She's in college now, so she's a little bit older than her sister was when she died, and she's dressed like her sister did. She's had facial surgery to try and make herself look more like her sister. She's lost loads of weight because her sister was really waifish, and it's like she's trying to embody her sister as best she can. We see their lives through her actions, her behavior, and how she chooses to live afterwards. But the crime, the murder, the mystery, the whodunit does remain present and important all the way through the book, regardless of whose perspective you're looking through. And you do wonder all the way through who done it. It is a mystery and it is enticing, but it's also not really the point of it. But because there is a who done it mystery involved, it does keep you pushing on because there's always going to be a part of you at the back of your mind that is wondering and hoping that by the end you will find out who done it. But the way that the who done it is explored in the second half of the book actually is fantastic. But again, not in a who done it sense. The reason it's fantastic isn't because you are learning about the murder and the motives and the victim and the abuser, etc. None of that. It's about the method that it's explored in and through. Kwon Yo Sun writes a few of these chapters that are about the murder and the murderer in a really interesting way. The, the method of writing, and I can't talk about it without spoiling things and I don't want to, but there is, and you'll see it when you read it, there's a method, there is a style of writing that she explores through two specific chapters that I absolutely loved and they were my favorite parts of the book in terms of their presentation and expression of character and words and dialogue and everything. But I can't talk about it at all. You'll see it when you get there yourself. And it's my favorite part of the book and it really explores the method of conversation between two people when we are only focusing on one of those two people. That's all I can really say. You'll see. It's really good. So as you can tell, this is a difficult book to review because it is a murder mystery, but it's very much not. As I said, this is a character drama first and foremost, and it's about the people who are left behind. We do learn more and more about one of the murder suspects, the simple boy and what happened to him and his lot in life. Christianity also plays a big role in this because Korea is a very heavily Christian place, and the subject of whether or not some character is Christian, uh, it comes up a lot. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations throughout this book. In fact, almost every chapter is a one-on-one -on -one conversation between two people, and Christianity and our relationship to it comes up a lot. I wouldn't say that thematically it seems to play a big role, but it does a good job of fleshing out our characters in terms of their relationship to death, their motivations, their behaviors, etc., etc. It's about the characters and about their lives. And whether or not they are Christian does factor into their behavior, as I said. I would say that my favorite aspect of this book is actually its delivery. I really like the way that language is used. I really like the way that the chapters are structured. I really like the slightly off-kilter dialogue between people. Sometimes the way that people talk seems a little bit broken caricatured even, and I really enjoyed that. It gives it a sense that the book is floating, that it doesn't quite have its feet on the ground. And I thought that that was really effective, and I love that in her translation, Janet Hong manages to capture that really well. I find Korean literature often has this floating quality. You get small novels that have a slightly surreal tinge to them. Just, just a slight tinge of the surreal. And again, that is really present here in Lemon. I thought that it worked brilliantly. So it's about the mood, the atmosphere, and the presentation first and foremost, for me at least. That's what is going to stick with me. As well as this gorgeous cover, Head of Zeus have done a really good job of selling this through its cover alone. I think this cover design is fantastic. And while I'm here talking about it, I will say that as you can see, underneath the dust jacket, the hardcover itself is yellow. So the, the yellow, the lemon theme keeps going. But that does bring me on to my only bit of confusion. Maybe it's my bad literacy, I'm not sure, but I didn't really get what the lemon thing was all about. The girl, Kim Hyeon, when she died, was wearing a yellow dress, and there are references to James Joyce. One of the characters likes to write poetry, and she was obsessed with Joyce as a teenager, and she would write poems about Joyce's characters, and lemon cake or something factors into it. I didn't really get the yellow lemon theme running through it. It was obviously some metaphor at play that I really didn't get, but that was it. 
that and the fact that you've got two narratives both in the first person, those are my only gripes with it. But the lemon thing isn't a gripe, it's me being stupid. If you read this book and you get what the yellow lemon symbolism is all about, please let me know in the comments. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Lemon is a great book. I'm so glad that it hit me as hard as I wanted it to. As I said, it was my most anticipated book of October and it didn't let me down. Another fantastic piece of Korean fiction. Janet Hong, great translator. Very, very happy with this. Check it out and subscribe for books.